little more energy. Morning, everyone. Morning. Welcome. For those of you who have not met me already, I'm Hazel Halligan, I'm the head of primary. I am overseeing, at the moment, whole school, FS1 to year eight, their assessment, their baselines, their attainment, their progress, and working with the teams in that. So today, as Mr. Hallam has introduced, we're going to have a look at our baseline assessments, what the last three weeks has been made up of for your children, and what we're going to do moving forward. So if we think about what we knew about your children when they came in three weeks ago, we had the last school report, which, believe it or not, didn't, doesn't tell us too much. Every school is different. Not all schools tell the truth. Some schools try to keep parents happy, so they inflate grades. Um, so, so we look at it, but we don't necessarily go by it. We had some of their entrance assessments, which give us some information, not in a lot of depth, but it makes us know kind of if they're on track or not. And we also have what you told us. So we had the introduction with teachers, you've met some of the senior leadership team. So, you know, we know a little bit about your children at that point. Believe it or not, not all parents tell the truth. Some parents think that their children are really gifted in maths, which they might be good at maths, but gifted in maths and good at maths are very different things. So, we had a picture, not a particularly clear picture, so we do need to um, check out for ourselves. Which is why we have started, last three weeks, our children in year two to eight have all been going through a suite of external assessments, all online. Um, First one they've done is the CAT4. This is Cognitive, cognitive Ability Testing, which tells us how a student learn, learns. It gives us predicted grades for when they are doing the GCSEs, their A-levels, even for our younger students. It tells us kind of what their general ability might be. We don't box them into that, but it gives us that prediction. It also tells us what their learning style, preferred learning styles are. So if they are more inclined to being taught orally, or if they like to see pictorial depictions of things, that test gives us a, a clear picture of every student. We've also had progress tests in English, Maths and Science. These are attainment tests. This will give us the benchmark for the starting points. All of the children have done their NGRT, which has given us their reading age, the current reading age at the moment. And in around two months, all of the students will take a pass test. This will tell us their attitude about learning, it will tell us about their well-being. The reports that come from this tell us they don't like to learn, and they don't really like their teachers, or they don't like school, or they really like one set of subjects and not another. And that's something when we get the data we delve into and find out just about the whole child rather than a table. That's our external, external tests, which is not enough. Brand new to school, children scared, brand new place, little anxious, can't use the equipment properly, not sure how to use a mouse while they're going through the tests. Some of them, some of the results don't come out. They're not accurate. So we need to have the internal judgments. We need to also assess them from our side where they're in a more relaxed, comfortable environment, so that we can just moderate if what the tests come out and say are accurate or not. Oh. So in terms of internal assessments, what the teachers have been doing with the children, they have been doing some writing, we call it cold writing. So cold writing, children, are, we say to them, write a story about a superhero in the desert. That's all they get and they've got 20 minutes to go off and write. And then the teacher is able to look at that, they look at last year's objectives, their age expected uh, objectives and decide, are they on track, are they not, what can they do, what are they not able to do, what do I need to do to help them. 
the Arab and Islamic Studies Department also um, does based on assessments in the same style for all subjects. And then we get on to our younger students who have all had phonics assessment. They've all been through every sign of the phonics scale, if they can blend, if they can segment, so that they're all going to have the correct starting point of where the phonics is. We go through the EYFS indicators. These are objectives for every age band. So if you're three years old, we have a list, or the curriculum is made up of a list of outcomes within each area of learning that says roughly what children at that age should be able to do. So our early years teachers spend the first three weeks playing with the children, watching the children, talking to the children, and deciding if they are able to do all of these outcomes, which ones they can do, and keep a track of it. Give us a general, general outline. Our early years team have also been looking at moving scales. Now these are indicators of engagement for our younger students. So this tells us if they're ready to learn and if their well-being is strong. Because as I'm sure you all know, if we don't have well-being, if things aren't right for the children, they're not going to learn. So this is one of the key, key things that we have in, in early years. And beyond all of that is teacher observation. So first three weeks has not been heavily curriculum focused. We haven't been going through a plan of a uh, progressive framework. We have been creating activities to see what the children can do. If they are at the age level they should be, if they're a little behind, if there are gaps, if there are things that they're really good at, if the teachers have been making observations and notes. Which means at the moment, our teachers now have a very clear picture of every child. We know their learning preferences, we know their predicted grades, we know general attainment in the core subjects, we have every child's reading age of right now, we know their writing ability of what they've shown us so far against their age expectations, same for Arabic subjects. We know every child's phonics level, where they need to start. We know where our earliest, our youngest learners are against the earliest profile and their well-being levels. As I said, when the past test is done, we'll have some external validation of well-being in our in the rest of the school community. So we have all this. Now what do we do? Progress of these children over time against the outcomes. 
They will repeat all of the assessments that they've done now at the end of the academic year, and then the next one, and then the next, so we can see if they are making expected progress, if they have gone up, if they are not making enough progress, and then we can intervene. So we look at it, we look at the children, we analyze that data, we have student progress meetings with teachers that we hold them to account and say, this child is not making expected levels of progress. Your data tells me so. What's going on? Sometimes there's a reason. Sometimes that child's not been in school for a few weeks, they've been ill. But we delve deeply to find the reason so we can put things in place to make sure that doesn't happen. Every child should be making above expected levels of progress, at least expected. When you receive your report card at the end of every term, you will see their progress judged as below expected, expected, or above expected. As I said, we want every child to have expected levels of progress or higher. If it says below, it will not be a surprise to anyone. You will have had those conversations, you will have been part of the process to make sure that doesn't happen. Our baselines are also helping us with resources. That's human resources, that's physical resources. I now have a clear picture of what the school needs. We know, for example, that in this school, our reading age generally is a little lower at the moment than it should be. Our money, our resource allocation, our budget will now go into reading. We'll make sure we have additional English tuition, we'll make sure the teachers are well trained in reading instruction, we'll investigate and research what resources we can use to accelerate progress in reading and make sure all the children are at the correct baseline level. And that's the same against, against um, all of the data. If well-being comes across as low, we know we have to invest in a well-being program, well-being staff or counsellors, so we use it for that level of planning. And then we also use it for accountability. So you can hold, we'll have a look at the data. We'll see, not so much baseline, but the next set, the next data drop, the next lot. And we'll see what's going well. Is the curriculum appropriate? Are children making progress? Generally, if not, there's a reason. It's usually from our side, if it's the whole cohort and we're able to say we need a different program, we need a different teacher, we need different training. Teachers are held to account if we see trends that individual teachers have very low progress in their classrooms, they need, may need additional training, they may need some support, they may, may need to not work for us. So it highlights concerns to us that we're able to intervene and make sure all children are, are receiving the education that they do need. And then this is the one that you will see most of. It's personalization, that's differentiation, individualized learning. You'll hear it in all sorts of ways. This data is what teachers can really use in the classroom. They know who they're highest attaining children are in English, it may be a different group from the highest attaining in maths, and they're able to target their instruction, target tasks, target questioning appropriately. They're also able to use it, the learning style profile to make sure they're teaching different groups in an appropriate way. They may have some children who will not be able to listen to this kind of lecture. Others who really, really strive from it. They're able to teach them in different ways, group them, and they receive the learning that they need. You will see this in homework, in lessons, and books, in the form of our little uh, medals. So we have bronze, silver, platinum, gold, gold, platinum, wrong way around. All of our students have the choice to do all of the activities. So as the activities become more difficult, more challenging, it goes up. So bronze is generally our easiest tasks, and then it goes up. Bronze is the scaffold that children might need to be able to achieve the platinum. Teachers will advise children where to start their starting point. So they'll say, I think, you know, 
You should start at the silver one, but push yourself to go up. Children are not boxed, they're not labeled. If little Johnny wants to start in the platinum task, it's really challenging, really critical. He is welcome to give it a go, teacher will support, but she will advise. Start here so you can really practice and develop your skills because I know from everything I've learned about you during the assessments that you still have gaps to fill before you're able to achieve this. When you receive homework, you'll receive them at this leveling. Encourage your children to reach for the platinum, go for the top, but if they need to start with the bronze and really consolidate, there's nothing wrong with it. It's not labeling, we're not saying they're always low at this, it's different subjects, different outcomes, different lessons, different days, different moods, different fields. And that's how the teacher will help to organize the classroom to make sure every child gets what they need. At this point, our key groups, SEN, Gifted and Talented, well, will also be catered for. They've been, they've been highlighted in the data, we know their learning preferences. A lot of information, I know. And then almost repetitive, it gives us the opportunity to intervene early. So, looking at the data at the moment, some children have performed poorly across all aspects. At this point, it's a big red flag. What are we going to do to help that child? At this point, conversations will be had with parents, and we'll decide in a team around each of these children what we need to do to accelerate their progress and find out what makes them tick, what do they need. I believe some of you will have already had these conversations, which are often not the easiest to hear, but you know, they're just not, not doing well. They just have, they've come in not on the level they need to. You don't want to hear it. But it's really important to engage in the conversations, have the conversations with the teachers, because everyone has the same end goal. We want all of the children to reach their full potential. If we intervene early, especially with our youngest students, it's the biggest impact we can have. Also for our gifted and talented students, if they've come out, they've always went through the school life on the on the goal task, they're in the high group. Gifted and talented students, that's not enough for them. Sometimes they need that extra challenge. And we'll be holding our teachers to account for that and also having the conversation with parents if they have been highlighted. And then what you might see, um, what you will see at MTW, that you maybe haven't seen it in a previous school, is that every child across school from FS1 to year 8 will have individual targets for all of the core subjects. So by half term, inshallah, every child will have a QR code on the back of their lanyard. And when you scan it, you'll be able to see what their target is for English, maths, and science. You'll know that in English, maybe if you're one child, it could be as simple as use capital letters at the start of the name. Whatever the teacher decides they need, to get to the next step will be their target. We will hold student-led conferences before the targets go. They'll be led by your children in our leadership drive. They will be telling you what their targets are and what they're going to do in their class with their teacher to achieve that target. Every six weeks, they'll be reviewed. Parents will be part of the process as much as possible. And when they're ready, another target will be set. So you'll know individualized, personalized targets for every child across four subjects, as well as the general picture for each one. As children get older, obviously they'll have their targets for GCSEs, they'll have their A-level indicators, and then as well as their outcome target, their usual capital letter school stops, the conversation will be had about their GCSE predictive grades and how we'll get them to that point. So for year eight years, that will begin towards the end of this year. And then finally, our baselines of parental engagement. We want parents to know where their children are 
what picture we have of your children, and we want you to tell us if we've just not quite got it right yet. So you might have seen that your child is a maths whiz. At home they can do all sorts of calculations, they can have deep discussions with you, but the teacher said, they're not really on track. Maybe it's confidence, maybe they've just not had the time to shine yet. We want parents to be engaged in that. We want you to be telling us when we get to home. We want you to be asking us how you can help. So these will all be shared towards the end of half term, like I said at the student-led conferences. You'll have a picture of what we think about your child, what their learning style is, what their general attainment is in the core subjects, what their individualized targets are, and then we'll need your help. How to help support them at home, have the conversations with the parents, with, with your children, have the conversations with your teachers, and celebrate your children when they hit those small milestones. So like I said, we'll have small targets, sometimes very easy targets, achievable targets, and we want the children to be celebrated. We want them to know what they need to do to improve. And when they get there, it's great. It's a big deal. It does not come easy. And same as us in our work, if you set a target and you get there, you want to celebrate the end of it. That is the ethos and culture we want to build here. And our commitment to you at MTW is that we'll be honest in our reporting, which will be very different from where some of you have come from. There'll be no surprises. If your child is below expected levels of attainment, below expected progress, you will know about it. And if you don't know about it, we have a, we have a problem somewhere. So really, to round up, our big signs at the moment, they are to tailor our instruction, adapt our curriculum, most importantly, measure our progress, allocate our resources, and to help all of your children succeed in the best way we can. To really look at what they need and work with you to make sure they, they get that. So, before I pass back to the principal, if you could take a moment just to scan this QR code, it will bring up a link to a Padlet, and the question on the paper will pop up. Is what now, having heard all that, what do you want to know? What do parents want to know from the class teacher about your child? Did it work? Yeah. What do you want to know? I have a son in FS1, I filled it in, Patrick's mum. I want to know what he's good at. I'll just explain it. I want to know what he's good at. I want to know how he can improve. I want to know how he learns. And really, I just want to know if he's okay for his age. I just, is he, is he alright? Is my boy okay? once, yeah, no matter how many children you have, just generally, you don't even need to put your child's name, don't need to put your own name, we would just like to gauge what parents really need to know from this, what, what do you want to know, what do you need to know, what would be helpful.
Okay, thank you so much for coming here today. This will stay on the screen as long as you want, so don't worry, we're not going to ask you to leave or turn it off. You've got as long as you want. These workshops are really important, as are our parent surveys, as are opportunities for you to come and see your children and their learning. We will open this school up, as I promised, way before we opened to you to be part of the journey. Okay? COVID came along and ruined things for far too long and too many schools aren't going back to the way it used to be. I'm determined to be up, we will do. So there is a parent survey out at the moment. Please complete it for each of your children. We will be analysing it next week and then we will have an event called a happy meet. Okay? This is where we transparently tell you what you're telling us and more importantly, tell you what we're going to do about it and we'll do this repeatedly through the course of the year okay to try and make things improve even more for you i've spoken a lot this week to start we are not a new school in my opinion now everything now is about learning the curriculum and student success okay and that's why we've timed this presentation exactly now we also have open afternoons or we call them book looks where again, you can come into the school, visit your classes, have an informal conversation with your teachers, but more importantly, see what your children are learning and let them tell you what they're learning and look at their books. Okay? So there will be many, many, many chances for you to come and join your children and see their progress and talk to us. Because that's really important, really important in our view, I'm sure in yours. If you have any questions about anything from today, Hayes and myself will be here as long as we need to to answer those. Okay? Next week's workshop, I believe, is to do with forest schools. So we'll be telling you two things. Nathan Price, Mr. Price is our forest school teacher this year. He'll come and talk to you about the importance of forest schools, the research behind it, and actually what forest schools are about. Hopefully very soon when the weather improves, we can start running family forest school events so that you can come together and join in. And I'm going to talk a little bit about the farm that we're building and the bio cube that's being constructed. I'll give you an idea of timescales when we're done, because hopefully it won't be too long, and also what's in there and what we're going to use it for with your children learning. Okay? So that's next week's session. Thank you for coming today. Hopefully it's useful. Please let us know if it's useful or if it's not useful, we want to know as well. So we don't waste your time on making it as best most informative information as we can. But thank you so much, Tom Say. As I said, we're not going to go anywhere, so if you want to ask us anything about anything, please do. Other than that, have a wonderful day, um, and thanks for coming. And thank you, Harry, for talking.